Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Good Sorry. afternoon, Naili. Sorry for the delay. All of a sudden, my okay internet lang. lost. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Okay. So let's start in uh, two minutes. Okay. Okay, thank you for the participants for joining us today. Are they all from Maklan, Eileen? Uh, yes, yes. Some of them okay. are um, students from NBC. Mm. Recorded din ba ito, Eileen? Yes, we are recording this one. Um, Oo. Kasi maka pwede, pwedeng i-replay. Mm -mm. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Okay, so... Kamusta po kayo? Uh, very good. Uh, kasama natin ngayon si Ma'am India. Okay, so I think we can start. Uh oh. Yeah. Right. Um, so for those who are joining us right now, this is um, in in response to what is happening right now. We have our COVID nineteen uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, and it has uh, give it has a, a big impact to the world. And so Aklanons adjusted their day to their day lives to what has been known as the new normal. So along this adjustment is a common feeling of uncertainty. No? Hindi natin alam kung ano nang uh, There's a change of culture and there's some despair. No? Maraming uh, nalulungkot sa nangyayari ngayon. In times of uneasiness, people often look to beauty and the arts to give them strength, inspiration, and hope. Now to celebrate the National Arts Month, the provincial government of Aklan, in partnership with Viva Excon, NBC, AHCSI, and Aklan Council for Culture and the Arts, has launched Resilyard, Resilyard, an art exhibit showcasing works of homegrown Aklanan artists in line with the theme, Alab Sining Alay Sigla. Aklanan artists share their artwork showing portraitures of children, local scenery of Aklan, as well as animals and nature, all to give positivity to the Aklanan people, a sense of unity and the resilience of the Filipino spirit. So we are featuring some of the artists here now. Um, okay, so let's start our PowerPoint.
Okay, so here is our uh, promo poster. Uh, the Alab Sini Alay Sigla National Arts Month of 2021. And for today, we have our guest speaker, Ana India de la Cruz Legaspi, for her talk on keeping the arts alive. Now we start with our virtual exhibit. And we will check. Uh, our first artist is Ana India de la Cruz Legaspi. She is a artist, painter, humanitarian, advertising in 1966. She is into textile making, advocate of Philippine fabric, uh, the Pina fabric based from Calibo Aklan. She uses Pina cloth as medium in her artworks, established heritage arts and crafts with a mission to upgrade, develop, and continue the weaving traditions of Aklan and to create livelihood to its people. Her, she has exhibited her products in local and international exhibits and workshops. She teaches PWA, people with autism, painting on Pina for awareness of autism. And she is a trainer on crafts for women in different municipality to alleviate from poverty. So in the exhibit in the provincial capital, you can see her first um, artwork, Portrait of Peach the Cat. Uh, it is a watercolor and it is 18 by 25 inches. She also has Curiosity. This is a watercolor painting. Um, the size is 12 by 19. So these artworks were selected um, to give inspiration to people. So these are artworks that when people look at it, it gives them hope and happiness. Of course, cats, uh, a lot of people uh, become happy when they see cats, right? So that's um, some one of the one of the, um, uh, the subject of Mam India. This is another art um, with a cat. It is titled Resting Under the Gardenia Blooms. It is watercolor, size 18 by 25. And then the chabi. This one is paint on pinya. So this is what is remarkable about Mam India. She uses pinya to um, as, a, as her medium, um, as her canvas. Okay, and uh, it is, I, I'm pretty sure it is not a, a, an easy canvas to use, but she was able to, to use it very well. Next is Koi in a Pond. This is a watercolor painting. The size is 30 by 19. And then we have Mom Erling the Kimpo F. Wilson. She is um, she has exhibit she has exhibitions at the Hemet Valley Arts Association. Um, and she has also uh, several awards. First place title Crab Claws. Um, title Red Iris Oil on Canvas at the Hemet Valley Arts Association in California, USA. She's also winner of the Lakbay Kulay Art Challenge, January 2016. Um, okay, so here are the works of uh, Erlinda Kimpo Fernandez. We start with her work entitled Fisherman at Sunrise, series number two. So this is oil on canvas, size 24 by 30 inches, and she priced it at 25,000. So her style is uh, what we call plain art impressionist, impressionism. And uh, if you are interested in this artwork, you can contact the uh, cell phone number uh, showing in this slide. Now, this is. Um, Another one of her work, it is quite big and uh, unfortunately we were not able to get the uh, dimensions of this, 
but this uh, this covers about um, about uh, three feet in width. Uh, I mean in length and uh, two feet in width. And uh, as you can see, this is a scenery from our Bakawan here in Kalibo. Uh, you can see there's a boat and the uh, mangroves along the river in both sides. And uh, she is also using her impressionistic style in this one. And um, she used oil on canvas. So uh, we can also contact Ma'am Erdinda for anyone interested in this artwork, uh, the same cell phone number. This one is also um, by Ma'am Erdinda. This is yellow gold gumamela. And it, uh, it is oil on canvas, size 18 by 24 inches. And um, the, the artwork is really uh, popping out in color. Uh, with the yellow and the gradient to red and uh, this is priced at 18,000 and you can also contact the cell phone number showing. <clears throat> um, so she, uh, Mom Erlinda, uh, lent us this artwork because it also conveys beauty and whenever we see beauty, it also helps us uh, relieve our stress. And um, the yellow color is uh, it, it's it it gives the feeling of happiness, and uh, that is what we are trying to achieve in this seminar. This one is called yellow fin tuna, and I'm guessing this is also a scene from from her, uh, um, her beach home in Hawili. And this is oil, oil on canvas, size 18 by 24 inches. Uh, this is priced at 18,000 pesos. Okay, we have here boat at sunrise. Um, so you see a boat and it's uh, sunrise uh, at the, uh, at the beach and this one is uh, oil on canvas size 30 by 24 and this is priced at 25,000 next we have um, fisherman at sunrise series number two and this is oil on canvas size 24 by 30 inches at uh, priced at 25,000 so yes, it happens in Hawili because some some of the uh, catch is uh, better at uh, at sunrise, and so she captured this moment with her uh, her painting. And finally, we have Hawili sunrise. Um, we would like to apologize for the low quality of our image here, but. If you are interested in this one, it is available for showing at um, the uh, provincial capital. But this is one, um, Mama Merlinda is known to use really vivid uh, colors. And so if you see this in actual, you would see how bright the colors really are. Um, and this is priced at 35,000. So that is uh, that is it for Mom Erlinda. Thank you very much. Next is Neo Miranda. She is the founding member of Island Artist Boracay. So, so he is based in Boracay. He was born in Alongapu City, Philippines, studied fine arts, major in advertising at Philippines Women's University, Taft Avenue, Manila, spent years working as a portrait artist before moving on to advertising industry. Since 2004, and he's been working as an illustrator, graphic artist, and scenic artist. He is happily based in Boracay Island since 2015, working as a full-time creative consultant while doing some commissioned paintings and portraits. His personal work currently focuses on portraiture and original painting, and his goal is to acquire as many technical skills um, while exploring art. So here is his contribution to the exhibit. This is called Paghihintay kay Tatay. 
This is used, um, uh, he used charcoal on paper, size 12 by 18, and it is for sale for 7,000 pesos. Next is bulaklak po. It is also a portraiture using pastel on paper. It is 12 by 18, and uh, it is also um, priced at 7,000. Our next artist is Mr. Billy Burgos. He is known as Calgary's most versatile illustrator, where he works as an illustrator designer at Caro Group Incorporated. He studied at the University of Santo Tomas class 1967 and worked at J. Romero and Associates Advertising Agency. Billy now shares his talent to a clan with his close friendship with India de la Cruz, the Gatsby. His works are mostly watercolor paintings with subjects that portrays everyday sceneries of people and places he has visit visited. So his first work here is the Guatemalan mother and child. It is a watercolor painting, um, size 17 by 13. This one is Bakawan, and it is a watercolor by uh, at size 12 by 7. And then earthen pot, this is oil pastel, 14 by 13. This one is bamboo house. So this is watercolor size 11 by 8. Our next artist is Soviet de la Cruz, more, um, more commonly known as um, SP Soviet de la Cruz. He is, um, he is a uh, at the uh, member of the Sangguniang Panalawigan, and his hobby is also in painting. And his first work is Children of Bacchus. This is oil on canvas, 18 by 25. This one is Cat in the Garden, oil on canvas, 18 by 25. This one is Garden Angel, oil on canvas, 18 by 25. And we have Running Horses, Oil on Canvas, 25 by 18. Next artist, this is one of our well-known artists here in Calibo. Her name is Cecilia Sumra de la Cruz Rojo. Sumra is a visual artist, poet, and journalist. She was previously the curator of the Museo Itaclan, where she conducted numerous exhibits. Sumra is a graduate of AB Economics and Bachelor of Fine Arts of Far Eastern University. Sumra has mounted two one-woman shows entitled Essence and Homage. So if you are an artist, once you have um, you have mounted a one-man uh, one or one-woman exhibit, it is uh, an indication of your skill, of your um, of your achievement as an artist. So she has uh, lent to us her artwork entitled Dance. This is watercolor uh, eight by 12. So this is a two, um, two piece artwork. Next is uh, Ariel Castillo. So Ariel Castillo is one of our up and coming artists. He is a Calibonan artist who works mainly in JLD, architectural design services as apprentice from an early age. He demonstrated an innate artistic, um, where, where were we? <laughs> talent and continued to bring a creative passion in art industry. He considered as artist of the room during his elementary days. Back then, he loved to draw animes and make, making some of his favorite characters using clay. In high school, he took architectural drafting from STBE subject. He won many art contests also during high school. His skills in art had improved a lot. Therefore, he graduated with honors and awarded also as the best in drafting or artisan of the year. He took Bachelor of Science in Architecture at the age of 16. Okay. He began drawing images of landscapes and buildings. His skills improved drastically. 
The mediums that he used are mixed media of watercolor, acrylic, and oil paints, charcoal, and color pencils. In 2018, he won first place in regional competition at Pasit 2018 held at the University of Antique. In the, year, in the next year, he won again the first place in regional contest that, held, that was held in Iloilo City. Because of that, he went twice to national competitions held in Dumaguete and Davao City. He was awarded twice as the Artist of the Year during 2018 and 2019. Now he is fascinated by nature scape paintings and realistic drawings, aiming to depict the beauty through a combination of color, texture, and light. And for this art exhibit, he, he is showcasing mandala. Mandala um, is white ink. He used white ink on cartolina. And if you go and see his artwork, it is really unique and very intricate. The size is 20 by 30. Next is Jello Sarzuelo. He is 19 years old, uh, lives in Calibo, Aklan. He is an Aklan-based queer artist. His passion for the art started early. He eventually pursued the creative path four years ago. He started making art as a self-taught artist, explored different mediums, and attended senior high school in Iloilo that specializes in arts and design. He is now a freelance art artist and producing works under his brand, Sining Nigello. He is also the president and the founder of Ayosca, a clan youth organization for society, culture, and the arts, an organization that supports the talent of a clan young youth artists. As a self-taught artist, he hopes to exhibit his works at galleries and art spaces and be part of the growing art community in Western Visayas. So his first, um, uh, his first artwork here is called Lucky Bloom. It is watercolor, size 10 by 13, and he is pricing it at 4,000. This one is titled Market Day. It is a mixed media art, size 42 by 20 and it is available for purchase at 20,000. Then we have Christy Cannon Casquejo. She is a black and white artist. Art is like a reflection of my paradoxical personality and believes that art should be an extension of one's soul. Christy Cannon Casquejo started drawing at the age of four and since then she never stopped making drawings from cartoon characters to anime, to landscapes, and fashion designs. In her early years, she used her passion to provide financial support to her family by creating storybooks, coloring books, and gown designs. She also makes ends meet by making simple projects cover covers with letterings and drawing. It was only when she took up architecture when she was introduced to more sophisticated and broader choices of art, styles, and medium. It was during the darkest times of her life when she discovered her identity in her field of arts. Undergone three years depression, she embraced her emotions to express her into abstract arts through cheap and scrap papers like recycled receipts. Being unemployed during the pandemic made her to be financially incapable of purchasing art materials, but she actually was able to find her mastery through cheap ink. Since then, black and white art style became the extension of her soul, a window, of her, a window to her true colors. Currently, she is working on her passion project, acclaimed as the first sustainable shop in a clan, the Durungawan. Aside from her expressing her feelings from, through arts, she also loves upcycling and advocating for the environment, mental health, and local art. And these are her artworks that are uh, currently showcased in the provincial capital. This is called Panaad sa Tunga It Pandemia. Her medium is pen and ink, size 10 by 15, and unfortunately, it is not for sale. Okay, next is Unmasking of Human in the Midst of Pandemic. The pandemic has not only unmasked humanity's resilience, but also it has uncovered the worst and best of each human. So I think this is very appropriate to our theme, which is uh, resiliency and how uh, challenges like the pandemic 
can can uh, create art. This one is Magta Taho. This is, is inspired by the viral video of the Taho vendor giving his Taho to a beggar, which shows the selflessness of a person who is also struggling in this pandemic, helping another human being. The message is to not wait for a hero to save someone in need because we all can be heroes in our simple ways. And this one is using latex paint in canvas. So that is uh, the end of our virtual exhibit. And now we move on to the topic of uh, the art of journaling, the alternative way to art expression. And our guest speaker for today is Ma'am in Ana India de la Cruz Legaspi. So let us give a virtual clap to Ma'am India de la, uh, de la Cruz Legaspi. Hello. Hello, Ma'am. Good afternoon, fellow artists. Uh, congratulations to the first exhibit that we have at the Capitol lobby and uh, you have all the all all of you have outstanding uh, artworks and it's inspiring to see that there are younger people already or art artists that are into art so we start with our lecture so the topic is the art of journaling an alternative way to art expression art journaling can also be uh, an art therapy to uh, keep the balance of your emotions where challenges come, whether during pandemic times or combating stress or depression. It, it helps a lot to our well-being also. So next, next slide, please. So um, what is art journal? I'm sure you already know, but maybe for, for others who had taken this for granted will be uh, also a review of what uh, art an art journal is. It is a place where you write or um, draw anything that is uh, personal, that is personal, a space that is uh, also a portable studio. And uh, it is a... Um, visual diary then uh, it is also a beginning of how you will make choices what you want to create as an artist periods of topics can be an every can be an everyday life of a community a family a flora or fauna and there are so many varieties of ways to collect and express your ideas as an alter alternative way of storing your creativity and inspiration. Along with your journey of self-expression, it can complement the way you think, create, and explore, and organizing information. Pages that will trigger the creative spark in your soul and take you to an unexpected and welcome journey. So we have some slides to, to show. Uh, next, next. Um, slide please, Eileen. So art journal can also be a garden in which we plant the seeds of art. It's an artist book. This is an example of, a, of a, an art journal where, where the artist or uh, that can um, portray or uh, show where to get the natural dyes that we have for textiles and for, for paper or for artworks. So you can make a drawing of what payao is or any uh, object and then you write what is all about it is all about so that you can, um, uh, you, you may put recipes, you may put what is uh, payao all about and uh, it's a nature um, record of what we can get from nature as a natural dye. So next slide, please. Next slide, Eileen.
Eileen? Oh, this is another example of the indigo. Indigo is very much a... Uh, uh, and, and also this one, we have uh, this in our... Uh, in this uh, ugasip is a forest cover. When you travel or you go to the mountains, you uh, show interest to, to the trees around it. And you will see that there are so many things that is very interesting in the forest covers of Aklan. This is our, uh, uh, was, uh, we went to the mountain and saw these blueberries at the, near the waterfalls. And it's quite a very interesting tree that uh, it is also sweet and the people in the in the mountain says that it is also a is uh, it is also a medicinal plant for stomach ache. So next slide, please. So uh, while while we are doing uh, showing you some of the slides, what do we do when we do our journaling? Well, how do we how do we start? First, we choose a sketchbook. It can be uh, a paper type, as uh, much as possible, uh, an archival or a, an acid-free paper kind of paper. The size may be small or may be bigger, but uh, it is enough that you can carry around when you go places. And uh, it should be open. When you open it, it, is, it should be flat. Uh, it would be hard for you if the, the pages will be uh, folding often and it could um, the, your concentration could be uh, hindered. So it should be flat, small enough or, or big enough for you to draw on your lap or on, on a stone or, or on a seat or a, a uh, small table. So the materials can be pens, pencils, watercolor, watercolor brush. Uh, when you do um, on a, a journal, you have to cover the paper so that it will not bleed on the other side. You have to cover it with white gesso or, or a white acrylic paint, flat acrylic paint. Then on the techniques, um, we can also do found objects like leaves for texturing rubbings for texturing also, stamping, stenciling, uh, spraying are, are one of the few techniques that we can adapt. So for the topics, we have um, natural, naturalist journals, like for example, uh, this is one of the examples of the naturalist journal. Um, how the mulberry uh, fruit uh, do have the fruits and the other leaves. That this is used for uh, food for the silkworms that we have for for silk silk textiles. So it can be a very informative kind of journaling. Then um, it can be a butterfly collection, uh, nature patterns. So there are so many myriads of things that we can create in, in making our journals. So mediums can be um, flat paper or scroll type, um, handmade papers, driftwoods, or, or uh, sticks that you can also put in, your, in, your, in a book. Uh, it can also be an accordion book. It can also be a postcard journals. And later on, I will show you how, what it is all about. We can also have techniques on decoupage uh, that's sticking in the, your artwork from the paper, pasting it on uh, wood. So um, uh, next, next, uh, next frame, please. Eileen? Yes. yes. Yeah, oh, next frame. Okay.
Okay, Ma'am India. So, yeah. Uh, if you love to travel or uh, if you're lucky to travel, um, you can also... Uh, you can also make uh, journals, like for example, your impression on a Navajo jar, what it's all about, what are the, why they have this uh, 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 discontinued lines on the brim. You can uh, tell the story about that, and it is part of their traditional motifs. So next slide, please. You can put your dates and where where it was taken or where it was uh, recorded. So next slide, please. And if you love to to remember your childhood <clears throat> uh, escapades, like I did, uh, you can use uh, cartoons or you can use uh, real paintings to show uh your experiences while you were when you were a child so these are all expressions and remembering remembering your your childhood days next slide please next eileen already you mom this one oh, yeah uh oh uh oh now these are the techniques. These these are postcard size paintings. Uh, you can do in uh, things. Uh, you can illustrate in pencils with watercolors. Your travels, like the one uh, when I traveled in India, <clears throat> and uh, she is uh, doing uh, mud paste on the wall. It has a combination of cow dung and mud. Uh, it's not too smelly if it's dry. Or sometimes, like when I had a dream, I, I made a record of it in my journal, uh, a postcard journal. Or a, a native, this was done by um, Billy Burgos on his travels also. So next slide, please. Ready, ma'am? Mm -mm. Yes. So this is uh, this one is a weaver from uh, in in Kyoto, and this is in Boracay, the Bakawan that we have. Then recording the flora and fauna that we see. We can also make sunsets, and we can make illustrations and uh, descriptions of how you were inspired to do this uh, artworks. So sunsets and. Um, and uh, sunrise can be a very interesting color also. Next slide. Ready, ma'am? Yes, yes. And this is a technique, pointillism, one of the techniques that we can do, pointillism or crayon resist <clears throat> to make uh, textures or uneven lines. <clears throat> Next slide. Next slide, please. And these are these are smaller uh, paper, um, art paper. It is um, three by three. You can make doodles or or fishes underwater fishes combinations and contrasts of of colors and you can also uh, do it on tags paper tags you can do on newspapers if you do not have any art materials uh, it should not hamper you from uh, making creative things even if there's no available uh, formal materials for painting so as small as this one three by three and as smaller than the three by three you can still create beautiful things Okay, next slide, please. Next, Eileen. Okay, Ayana po. Oh, yes. Uh, this one is a stone art. So you can make uh, landscapes, 
or mandalas like uh um sino si Jello ba yon? Yeah. Jello uh, is doing Ariel, the mandala. Ariel Castillo. Oh. Ah, Ariel, yes. And uh this is uh the beach uh scene. Uh and then these are flowers, landscape, the turtle uh design. So this is uh, done by children with autism. So you can also make uh paperweights uh, using the stone art that you you can create. Okay, next slide please. Okay na. Okay na. Yes. So this is uh Billy Bulgo's work. Uh a, a unique way or or when you when he maybe when he went to the market he saw that the wrappings are in newspaper so he painted on it on a postcard paper so it's uh, quite interesting also with light and shadow and the uh, the newspaper it's all this one is done in watercolor so you can include things that you see around you things that you pass by that could make uh, an, an interesting uh subject so next slide please next Eileen you see it yeah next this one is also a postcard size sketch uh, in pencil and then you color it with watercolor it's a rainy day or a season for typhoons that you can also depict in your, if you want to tell stories of how you went through a typhoon, can also be an interesting uh, topic and subject for painting, for writing and subject for painting. Next slide. And uh, again, this one is more of wash-on-wash -wash technique with the, with the details on the fishes and uh, contrasting colors on the background. Next slide. So, in conclusion, uh, there are so many uh, possibilities of... of uh, making an art journal whether we use the traditional sketchbook to record ideas and some alternative structures or a combination of both um, and um, it may not only be a way of uh, expression to collect artistic ideas and things uh, you love to do or remember and it is uh, one way of uh, uh, making treasures to keep in your heart in your art journal, in your journey to your um, to your art, and it's a continuing and exploring of of uh, things or ideas until you find the system that suits you best. So art journaling can be a way of of expressing creatively in just a few seconds or minutes that you can uh, put your time on it. So, uh, in in uh, in parting, the inspirations that you have and the creativity that you combine together can give a beautiful impression in your life as an artist. These are influences that could give you a holistic kind of artist that you will be in the future. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. Thank you, thank you, Mom India. I hope. I gave you a very uh, inspirational. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, very appreciated. Uh -oh. um, now we will proceed to a one to two minute reaction from Sir Eman Hernandez, visual art um, instructor. And then after that, we will yes. ask uh, our our audience if they uh, we will entertain uh, one to two questions from them. Okay, so let us hear from Sir Eman Hernandez. Yes. Oh, um, hi there, yes. That was quite inspiring, uh, Ma'am India. 
um, I like the insights. Uh, talking about art journaling. Um, yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, I think nakamute kaya ta, uh, Ma'am India. Okay. Oh, sige. Yes, Eman. Yeah. Yan. Uh, person, uh, first of all, shout out sa lahat ng mga students ko sa, ano, sa KAED 23, Teaching the Visual Arts class. I hope that you're able to get uh, some vital information and uh, you're able to be inspired by the words of, and uh, works of uh, um, India. Anyway, uh, talking about art journaling. Um, I, it's to me, uh, be, being a, a degree holder in uh, visual communication, we have uh, many ways to express. We have, we have many ways to uh, make records of, uh, of our life's events. And uh, some can be in a form of photographs. Yeah, mm. that, uh, right? Uh, yeah. It, Still a visual communication. It captures uh, 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 it's a, a record of uh, what is interesting to you, kung ano interest interesante sa you, and to all of us, uh, it, it some some uh, images or experiences can be moving in such a way that it affects us, it inspires us, it it, it is it it is it makes an imprint, it, it creates an imprint in our memory. That uh, that that uh, that remain for a long time. So now that now the 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 beauty of uh, art journaling, uh, uh, in my opinion, is it's not done with ease. There is a process. There is um there is a process wherein what you what you see what you get what you've experienced in one of your journeys, be it a place a special place that you've been to or or maybe you're going through a dark time in your life, you take it down, you make a record of it, but it's not a mental record. It becomes a physical record. It becomes a physical record in a form of an artwork and uh, I, I've seen that uh, that uh, well during my time um, there uh, they they used to scrapbooks scrapbooks used to be uh, popular uh, yeah. among, uh, mostly among the girls that they you would see scrapbooks na merong ano yan, merong merong yang dried up petal merong ticket ng bus uh, merong mga scribbles, swirls, yes. uh, mga, mga swirls, things that that would just uh, no, that would just remind you of of the place or the feeling that you were going through in a particular time, maybe a particular place. So, mm. so, 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 um, when I say that keeping record of those experiences through art. By uh, which which you would refer, Ma'am India, as art journaling, mm -hmm. is something that I would like to be practiced by lots of people. Everybody. Uh, every time. Uh, there's no age. Uh, the, there's no age limit to this. Yes. Because uh, it doesn't mean that you have it, you do you don't have to be um, competent in uh, in 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 drawing or or whatever. Because any scribble, any any attempt to create something that is a representation of your experience is noteworthy. Is yeah. something that will not go to waste. Is something okay. that is uh, no, that is um, interesting. Interesting first and foremost to you because it, is, it can be very personal. But also, there is something in us that we want to share. Perhaps if I if I make a, a stone art, and do, and dun sa stone art na yon, eh, so it's displayed in my house, and somebody should see it in my house. 
then it becomes a good talking point. Would you agree, Ma'am Ma India? It becomes yes, a good talking point. Yes, correct. Kasi you don't have to, hindi ka na nangangpa kung ano yung pag-uusapan nyo. That right there <laughs> is quite rich. It's quite rich in terms of the time, the period, or the experience, or what what uh, what that uh, stone art reminds you of, right? You can talk yeah, about right. your product. You can talk about uh, how how you chose that stone, that 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 stone in particular, because it stood out. It was calling out to you among all the stones that you see there. So, so 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 um, yeah, that's one. That's uh, art. Art journaling is a is is a beautiful thing, and maybe it's also a reminder for me that I I stopped doing that. I I used to do. <laughs> I used to, and I I used to do. I, and and even uh, no, journaling can be a history, part of history of a community because the somebody recorded it visually and with also with a uh, literary uh, inscription. So maganda kasi you can. You can contribute to the history of the place by what you have recorded. That's true. That's true. Oh. Uh, I, I am reminded about those uh, cave paintings. Yes. Paintings. It it is a chronicle of what uh, the the early civilization or those uh, those uh, people living in those those caves. They uh, they were actually writing their history. Yeah. By way of those representation of animals mm. and those anim uh, or an animals or other people or other rituals that they they uh, they 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 were they were engaged. In. Oh, yes. So. Mm -hmm. So yun. Um. Okay. I, I think I've uh, I've I've gone over two minutes. Sorry for taking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, la. Maganda nga eh. Kasi uh, it's better. The the young now should also be uh, uh, should also show their impressions and expressions in writing as well as uh, making also visuals on what they wanted to to say right. is very interesting and uh, it can divert you from any stress especially now that we are into pandemic we have fears we have we we are controlled to get out so. Even in the homes, in your homes, you can already do so many things. Even around your house, are interesting things to write about. Yes, good point. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm reminded about uh, Casey's work, uh, the the black yeah. and white pieces, the yeah. black and white pieces uh, there at the provincial capital. Uh, um, I I I just heard that she was. When when she was making those artworks, she was depressed, and it mm. was she was out of work and during the pandemic, and in that and and by doing so, it helped her. It helped her get through a a dark moment in her past. Mm. In her life, Correct. In her life, and I guess the the youth, the 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 young ones should engage in that. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about expression and impression. Yeah. Um, India. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. Can you expound more on that, please? Just a little. Uh, impressions. Uh, what, what do you mean? The techniques, you mean? Yes. Uh, okay. So, like pointillism, it's not. Uh, you have the form, but it's not the the way. Um, uh, it's done classically or But the impressions of, like for example, what you see in the light. Uh, yeah. like plain air or or uh, uh, dark uh, dark and light like chiaroscuros so the e expression of what you see can be creatively done not really on the realistic side but also in uh, impressions on the light expressions of form and movements uh, expressions on on the dance the music you can express it also while you are painting. The movements is very necessary when uh, you can feel, uh, when you see uh, the, the artwork can be parang sumasayaw sila. Yeah. So the, the movement and the flow of the colors can be uh, an impression of things that 
uh, the artist would feel. Like Van Gogh, uh, the, 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 the lights into circles gives the emotion of, of turning and maybe it could reflect that his mind na umiikot ang utak niya pero he wanted to express it on paper and that made him uh, did so many 800 paintings by one although he is so depressed that he cannot he was born in in uh, early he, it's not his time but the the his style is more modern and more uh this time that uh the time that he was not appreciated which made him so depressed maybe and his life so even even artists now we should not compare to people uh, to artists in the past because when you say sabi nila ang artist gutom but you have as an artist hindi i don't believe that magugutom man tayo masipag lang dapat tayo because we have so many venues to express ourselves and we can also sell it to somebody else who appreciates our art so yeah. it's more like sipag pa rin and then uh consistency in your work uh you can create styles you like this you remember picasso has a realistic uh beginnings but when when he improved himself uh it's more like yung ilong nawawala na sa lugar pero it was appreciated and it was uh, in his time it was the first that uh uh, uh ano ba uh, lumabas siya sa 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 normal ro norm so yeah. appreciated pa rin siya because he nauna siya sa style na yon and then everybody went with the the flow of the the styles that we have so we can also create things, not just uh, seeing, but also creating something in what you see. Like tigers can be different forms, different colors, not the usual yellow and black stripes. So, so many things that artists can only create. That's so right. that's why I am so particular of, of uh, when I was thinking of this, uh, this, um, this uh, conference, I was thinking of ano ba yung topic kasi kung, kung about art, kung hindi tayo mag-concentrate sa isa, pal, isa lang medyo sabog na. So I was um, um, thinking of, of doing the uh, uh, lecturing on the art journal because it is a, a way of expressing ourselves uh, emotionally and uh, a way of, of uh, as a therapy also. So maganda na ano na venue for for getting out of the ordinary like para hindi na tayo ma stress sobra na yung ano the the because of the fear nawawala na tayo sa lugar <laughs> para bang saan na tayo pupunta but then if you focus on your your art not necessarily artist ka Anybody can do. If you know how to uh, draw numbers and lines, yung mga numbers na yun can be buhok mo, number three, ilong mo, number seven, ten, in, in yung eyebrow mo, and then yung eyes. So, sasabihin mo hindi ka marun mag-drawing, hindi ako naniniwala. Even uh, if yung mga bata can draw. Correct. Yun ang, mga, yun ang inner, ano natin eh, talent, God-given talaga. That's why sino yung mga first people noon na who who drew in caves. Yes. So kung wala yun, wala tayo, hindi natin alam ang history nila Tama. or us. So artists are, are gifted and yes. we should be proud and can be consistent continue. Yes. <laughs> okay. No one okay. is exempted. And, yes. And Everybody is an artist is creativity yeah yes. i have so uh, i have a they have a question here from uh, one of my students uh, in uh, oh yes uh, for for now yeah. we also want to acknowledge uh christine sumugat um she is um verbalizing her support to you mag india go 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 anti india yeah. <laughs> support from ahcsi dal so we have oh, questions yeah. from our students uh, 
Okay. Yeah, um, one of the questions is, um, what makes a painting uh, or a drawing more realistic? Uh, that's ah. from Kaligiran. Uh, from Kaligiran, uh, one of my students in uh, teaching the visual arts. Um, okay. Can I go first, Ma'am India, and then oh. you, uh, okay. uh, the one to we finish? We found up there, okay. Sige. Okay, from, from what I know, uh, Kaligir, uh, Miss Kaligiran, um, um, I, uh, the basics, there are tonal values. There are tonal mm -hmm. values and there are, uh, I believe, nine tonal values. And the way we teach this in, uh, in, uh, in our, our art workshops is you make nine boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So uh, one being the darkest and, and you, number nine being the lightest. Now, to your question, what makes a painting or a drawing more realistic? I believe that the more tonal values you incorporate in that painting, so you have your highlight, your shadow, your mid-tone, your, 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 your mid-tone, and, and all those tones in between, if it's depicted in, a, in an artwork, like, like a portrait, Let's say, uh, let, let's say it's a charcoal drawing. It becomes realistic. It becomes like lifelike because, because of the infusion of tones. Now, tones can be in, uh, you can be using colors and tones. So it doesn't have, so you can have, make depict the, the nine tonal values using colors. On the other hand, it can be monochromatic, like, Light, uh, white, grays, and blacks. Okay. Mamidia, take it away. <laughs> okay. Pag uh, sinabi mong realistic, kung ano yung nakikita mo, yun yung drawing mo. So, okay. which means that kung ano yung kulay ng, ng tao, yung tonal values is included. Yung the eyes is the way you, you look at it na kung ano yung, yung hibla ng iyong kilay, Ganon din ang ilalagay mo doon sa ano. So, realistic is what you see. Uh, in nature or in people or in other forms, na parehong-pareho or kopyang-kopya mo yung uh, uh, artwork mo sa nakikita mo. When, when you look at it in abstract, iba na. Uh, when you look at it kung yung tama ng light, yun lang ang i-emphasize mo. So, iba na rin yun. That is not realistic. It's more like impressionism or the forms that you do is expressionism, uh, mga taong umiiyak. Pero yung details of, the, of nature itself or on people are the, the things that you say it is realistic. Para kang kumuha lang ng litrato sa isang tao. Kung ano yung ng click ng camera mo, yun din ang form na makikita mo. So that is more the realistic way of painting. So kung nakikita mo yung ano, like portraiture is more of re the realistic side of, of uh, painting. Or even landscape, like all the details that you see in a tree, you see in, in a field, you see in an insect, eksaktong eksakto sa nakikita mo. Parang photographic na siya. That's more like real, realism ang tawag doon. Okay. Okay ba, Emma? Tama ba yun? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Very good. Very nice explanation, Ma'am India. Ayan. Uh, <laughs> Sir Emma. Emma. Uh, you have unmute. Uh, wala ka sa ano? Close yung ano mo? Nakamute naka ka, Emma. Okay. Mute. Oh. Yes, well said, Ma'am India. Ah. Uh, Kasi uh, kayo mas 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 na mas na, na sagot niyo yung tanong kasi I was already uh, in the depiction of the volume the yeah, volume, oh, oh. form the uh, form, uh, form. Oh. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it becomes realistic when you see the details and you incorporate that you you ano you put that in your artwork mm -hmm. capture that it pwedeng nasa how the hair flows yes okay o kaya eh, yung color ng ano yung color ng ice niya those small details contribute to oh. 
making that artwork more realistic. Uh, so I hope yeah. we were able to answer your question, uh, Ms. Kaligiran. Oh, ito, example ito, makikita ba? Ito ay sample. Yes. Medyo balik wow. tayo. Ito ang sample ng realism. Kung ano yung nakikita mong sa 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 ano, sa, sa ng mata mo, yun ang i-drawing mo pati shading, yung tonal values na sinasabi ni ni Eman, nandiyan lahat pati yung mga uh, light and shadows, the dark parts, kuhang-kuha mo lahat. Link. So this is uh, the realistic way of painting. Okay. Right. <laughs> so that's a um, uh, very good explanation, Ma'am India. And um, we have we can entertain one more question. Okay. This one is also from uh, Kaligiran. Uh, her question is for us who wants to pay. What are some advices and guidelines that you want us to keep in our mind? always ah. like in choosing the kinds of brushes paints Oo. and i think we also we're we're already uh covering that in uh, a little bit right mm -hmm. a, a while ago mm -hmm. so maybe you can just add add some more uh, uh, uh to the question the usual is you you can choose kung ano yung uh kung ano gusto mong i-express mag-express ng iyong artworks kung uh, ball pens or felt, felt pens, colored pens, colored pencils, uh, any, any medium. Uh, or or sa, sa paper naman, kung mag-uumpisa ka pa lang, what is best is using the Oslo paper. Kung wala pa yung 140 grams of paper, uh, acid-free Stratmore, pa Stratmore paper, which is very nice for watercolor, uh, canvas can also be like for example when I when I uh, explored my artwork using the pinya as my my canvas so it made a difference to the industry of painting on pinya uh, medyo ibang expression mo pero on, on a textile indigenous textile so uh, you can also paint on, on abaca paint on uh, materials that are available. Hindi kailangan na, ay, wala kasi akong papel na Stratmore, hindi na ako gagawa. But around your place, or anything, yung mga fallen leaves mo, iba-ibang kul kulay din yun, you can cut it and put it in a collage that can already start you as um, a creative uh, works mo. So, Maraming you can explore everything. Uh, for brushes, you can use number four, uh, detailing and and uh, yung round brush, flat brush for for uh, uh, painting the background. Uh, the size of the flat brush can be two inches, or a soft brush like a Chinese painting brush, for for a bigger brush for for. Um, Let's say uh, uh, it can also be in details and it could be on a wash on wash thing. So um, exploring while you have no formal uh, lessons yet on, on, on art, get, just to uh, explore and look at uh, things, um, parang instructional or tutorial in the web, sa, sa Facebook or sa YouTube can improve uh, your or your expression or your art expression so uh, learn learn so much about art or learn about nature that you can also develop as your subjects malami pa maraming magagawa ka small things like for example i will show you this is a three by four Na, na ano na koi na parang ano siya yung um, ano nga ito uh, para refrigerator sticker yung magnet so you can do uh, things like this mga small things that hindi na matatapos mo in in 30 minutes or in 1 hour that could make you uh, be happy already on what you are doing so more 
uh, look at the moon, look at the leaves, look at the, the sea, look at the landscape, look at the colors uh, of a landscape, make it solid, hindi mo na detail. So, maraming expressions that you can do. Like, for example, we'll see this one. Ito. Ayan. Gusto mo ng gabi, uh, blue background with uh, black black objects and the moon is shining with the little clouds ano lang yan imagination mo na lang yan you can develop your imaginary uh, uh, moments so uh, for imaginary moments you can also be sensitive of what is around you para you can develop your creativeness your sensibility around you can be developed into a creative um uh uh, expression. So, ang dami. Ang dami tayong magagawa. Uh, at, and then, uh, this one also na do not criticize so much yourself. Kasi kung hindi, kung if you have too much criticism on yourself, hindi ka nagagawa. Kasi pangit ako, do not compare it to somebody else. Never compare. Dahil ikaw mismo, Ma, ma ayaw mo na dahil ay hindi ako kasing galing niya o hindi ako kasing galing ni, noon kahit na baluktot yung form mo that is your style that is your art and um, continue exploring colors form shape etc okay thank you thank you ma'am india <laughs> okay so ang na pick up ko po kay sa inyo is that it is your feeling. Pag yes. kayo'y gumagawa, it makes you happy. Uh -huh. it, that is your therapy. And uh, I, I, I know that you are doing um, art for children or people with autism. Yes. So it is really a therapy because doing art makes you feel better, makes you feel happy. And I think that, that is what we need right now, no? Yeah. Now that we are um, getting uh, sad because of um the situation with the pandemic um it is doing the art itself not necessarily doing something to impress people but to to express yourself mm -hmm. uh it seems like that is the way mom no to yeah. uh, to um to be resilient and oh. to cope with uh, with okay. Okay. Christy, uh she did uh coloring books uh, while while she's undergoing depression, which na divert niya yung kanyang depression into something very creative, something that uh that is uh you you can uh, parang uh you can see. So miski ako then during the pandemic time, what will I do? Even our business is already on the downhill, pero hindi nagpatalo. I made a book also a a. Uh, uh, children's book natapos ko din <laughs> during the COVID time. So, maganda. It's productive. Make yourself productive. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ma'am India. Uh, yes. We will be looking forward to uh, public, to the publication of that book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I'm looking for a good uh, publisher. <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is, uh, I guess, the end of our first lecture um, yes. I, with with big thanks to our speaker, Ma'am India. And thank you. Um, thank you to all the participants today and uh, have a nice day. Um, I will end this now. <laughs> thank you very much, Ma'am India. Our reactor, Ma'am uh, yes. Sir, Sir Eman. Okay, so goodbye and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.